So in your high school years, this is when you started to draw some interest in competing in these pageants. Like you said, you went to Ala Moana and you saw these pageant contestants walking through. And what was the first impression, I guess, that obviously you wanted to see what this was about. But as you started to learn more, how did that interest grow? I was in modeling classes at the time, actually. I had always wanted to be a model, just always thought it was interesting. I wanted to learn about it. So my parents had put me in modeling classes. And my biggest thing was I just wanted to be more confident. And I was getting a lot of that from the class, learning all these skills and just things to try. And when I saw those girls, they just looked so confident. And I wanted that. So that really was kind of what pushed me over the edge. And I, I went back to my modeling class and I remember talking to my teacher about it. She was like, yeah, you got to try it. And yeah, I just thought that is what I needed. Got it. And you keep bringing up, this is, this is something good to hear because I think everyone goes through this in whatever their activity or whatever their goals they're striving for, right? Is that lack of confidence oftentimes is one of our biggest obstacles that we need to overcome to start to improve and achieve more. So was there anything that made you feel like you weren't as confident as you could be when you were growing up? I think it kind of came in and out. The good thing is I always had a high self-worth. And I think distinguishing the difference between those is is important because your self-worth is like what you think you deserve, but then your confidence is how comfortable are you going to get what you deserve kind of thing. I mean, we moved so often. So I would always, when we got to a new place, kind of have that moment of, I don't know. And then I would be good. And when I got to Mona Lua, the difference was it just was such a big school that I wasn't sure. I I was uncomfortable at first. And I, I wasn't sure where my group of people were because it just was so big. So it took me a while to find that. And so it just took longer for me to be like, okay, I'm good. And that period of like not knowing, just it being longer than normal, I think threw me off a little bit because I, I just wasn't sure. I wasn't comfortable yet. I didn't know who I was because it, it seemed like, oh, well, I don't have friends yet. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm not that cool. <laughs> that is definitely hard, especially when you're moving to a new place and you said that you moved here when you were 15. So that was your sophomore year, I'm guessing. Junior, actually. Junior year. Yeah. Okay. So then, you know, it's later in high school too. And, you know, it's tough to make mm-hmm. any move at any time, but especially in that later years of high school. So now you found this. And before we go on, I, I do have a question because this is just me not being exposed to this world, right? So for modeling classes, what is that experience like? Like what, how frequently do you meet, you know, what do you do or what do you work on in the classes and what is all of that? Like, just to give a better picture. It's really interesting. I actually went on to be a teacher for about five years on and off. And most of the kids, you get some kids who come in wanting to be a model and wanting to learn how to walk or how to pose and that stuff. But 90% of the kids will come to the class because they want to be more confident. So we learn posture we do learn a runway walk and and posing techniques but we also learn etiquette and how to do an interview how to talk about yourself comfortably what a resume looks like so we it really it's yes a modeling class but it really is kind of like an etiquette class and just gives these kids some general life skills that will make them stand up straighter and feel good about who they are got it I think anybody would benefit from modeling classes, <laughs> just, just everything life skills wise, posture, you know, holding yourself up confidently. And that's something too, is that even for athletes, you know, it's kind of the sports psych- psychology side of things, but for athletes, you know, being in like power poses, you know, that's kind of what everyone has heard the past decade, but those kind of things do have a mental uh, benefit when you're preparing for some kind of event or whatever it is, pageant or preparing for the game. So these are things that I think even in modeling classes, it's applicable to so many things that we're doing in life. 